Okay, 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 okay. I think I'm going to have to adjust, maybe temper with a few things that I've said in the past. Recently, I talked about Oleo Levy on a video uploaded July 29th of this year. That was just over a month ago. What's next for Oleo Levy? I was just re watching that video because I wanted to talk about Yo Levy again. And mostly because there's some new information and new ideas, new tidbits coming from Jim Benning himself about Yo Levy that I think we really should talk about at least. Let's go over Yolevi's plan for the future, and I wanted to make this video specifically, again, because my video back on July 29th, I think it was a little bit premature. I think a lot of the things that I said then, I kind of want to revitalize a little bit. So, basically, Oli Yolevi, we all know Yolevi. I made a video yesterday talking about the Vancouver Canucks and their small, but still fulfilling, prospect training camp list. Yolevi, along with Quinn Hughes, they were the two best players on that squad. Because all of our really good prospects like Hoglander, Pud Colson, Madden, they're out and about doing other things. But in Vancouver this weekend for the training camp, it's Hughes and Yolevi. This is their training camp. However, Jim Benning came out recently and had some really nice comments about Yolevi that describe just exactly the path that Yolevi is seen to be taking by the Vancouver Canucks. Check out this article here on The Province, written by Ben Kuzma, talking about a rehabbing Oli Yolevi and these comments that Jim Benning has said about him. Now, before we get into all that, let's just go over a few other tweets, because this has actually been popping up on Twitter. Everybody on Canucks Media is talking about Yo Levy right now. Let's go over back to Jason Bruff's tweet here. He brings up Jeff Patterson from a while ago, talking about Oli Levy's timeline. Now, I'm actually going to add a little bit of points to this just before we actually get into J-Pat's tweet. First off, yes, we know Yo Levy taken fifth overall in the 2016 draft by the Canucks, and out of the top 17 picks in that draft, Oli Olevi is the only one to have not played a single NHL game. In fact, within the top seven alone, the one with the second lowest games played is Jesse Pugliarvi at 139. So that's the kind of company that Oli Olevi is keeping within him. And just from this perspective alone, he has taken a longer time to develop. That's not a surprise, but let's go further here. Yolevi played his draft plus one year in 2016-2017 with the London Knights. Wasn't super amazing. He was at the same points per game on a team that lost its top line in Marner, Kachuk, Dvorak, and was instead led by Cliff Poo, JJ Pichnich, and Robert Thomas. It wasn't super amazing, but the fact that they lost their top scores was really indicative of the point, let's just say, maintenance of Yolevi. Then he played with the TPS Turku in the Finnish Liga, 19 points, 38 games. He was their best defender in the playoffs, and he had a much better second half than he did a first half. Seven points in 11 playoff games. He was playing top two minutes by the end. Sammy Salo, who was the development defensive coach over there, was like raving about Yolevi too. So that was a very positive sign back a year ago. Then in his draft plus three year, he played his Utica Comets debut year, which was great just looking at the points per game, but in its entirety, from October to April, it was not that good. Because he got injured. Let's take a look at J-Pat's tweet over here. Yo Levy's timeline, November 17th, he plays his last game in the AHL. Because he gets hit into the boards, it's not pretty, knee injury, okay. On November 21st, four days later, it was told that Yo Levy suffered a minor knock. Three days later... Benning says that Yolevi is coming to Vancouver for rehabilitation and, I believe, medical care? I'm not too sure the exact context there, but it was just for him being able to work on his knee. Then, a few days later, Jim Benning says that it will take two to three weeks for Yolevi to recover, and he actually skated here in Vancouver. Two days after Benning says that, Benning says that Yolevi doesn't need surgery. Two weeks later, he has knee surgery and he's out for the rest of the year. 
So we're taking a look at it here. Yolevi has had a pretty unfortunate season and only recently have we had any super important developments here going into the training camp. Back when I made my video on July 29th, Yolevi was already cleared to start skating and that was the process that he was going through at the time. Let's go back over to Ben Kuzma's article on The Province talking about some of these quotes that Benning has recently about Yolevi. He just got the okay last week from the doctors and is still doing the rehab. They're just going to make sure they bring him along slowly. They're not going to throw him into the fire and just see where he's at day to day. Basically what that means is that come training camp, Ole Olevi is gonna be playing at his own pace. They're not gonna put the same amount of stress on him as they will be with their other top guy, Quinn Hughes. Yolevi has his own path here, and it's slow. The rehab has to finish up, and he has to go at a speed that's appropriate for his own personal development. There haven't been any setbacks. He met with the surgeon last week and got a good report. It's just part of the surgery and we're just working through it right now to figure out what group he's going to be in. There's a good chance he's going to be rehabbing and not in one of the main groups at the start. We don't want to put him in a position where he's going to have a setback. Right now, he's on schedule to start the year. Now this is where I kind of step in with my own comments about what I said about Yolevi back on my video on July 29th. I said roughly if Yolevi starts the season in the NHL or the AHL or whatever, it doesn't really matter where he starts because this will be the first span of hockey he plays in almost a year. I said pretty much by the time January, February rolls around, if Yolevi isn't a full-time Vancouver Canuck, then I said that I would start being concerned as to whether or not he's got an NHL future. And I think that's a little bit premature because by then, Yolevi will be 22, right? There's no real reason to knock a guy who's 22, who's been plagued by injuries his whole tenure here and say that he's got no NHL future. But at the same time, I will say that being in the NHL by January is much better than not being in the NHL by January in a general context. But these comments and this whole situation with Yolevi and the rehab, I think it kind of just illustrates how Yolevi isn't supposed to be in that normal boat where we can just say, yeah, if he's not on the team by January, he's a bust. And that's not what I was trying to imply, but I was trying to imply that the potential of becoming a bust is higher the longer he's not on the team. But let's go over to Jim Benning here because Kuzma's article talks about how Yolevi injured his knee in November and more than eight months later, he's still in the rehab phase. It has to be frustrating for the player and the Canucks. Jim Benning rebuttals though and he says, not for me. We want to make sure we follow the right protocol and do things the right way. I know he feels strong, had a good summer and keeps progressing. So, I think that in itself just highlights the plan here and how the plan is, there isn't really a plan. Just go with the protocol, go with the rehab, go with what the doctors say, and formulate the path through that. Because me sitting here and saying that I would start to become really concerned on an NHL future if he isn't a Canuck by January is a little bit premature and not necessarily giving Yolevi the best credit here. We do have to remember that pretty much the last year of hockey that Yolevi played, which was all of 2018, was really positive. Finishing things off with TPS and Turku and having the playoff run that he did and having the Utica Comet stint that he did, that was all extraordinarily positive. And he was producing, he was better, he was playing better defensively, which was the one knock that Sammy Salo had on him two years ago. Yolevi is still an NHL prospect who has top four potential, and Jim Benning here highlights that the plan is to have him start. He's gonna start the year, probably in the AHL, but no matter what he does in the AHL, whether he takes a full year to get back up to speed and catch his game, I still think Yolevi has top four potential. And if you go onto Twitter, you'll see a lot of people trying to harp on him saying that he's not that and that he's a bust. Check out what Jason Bruff says here. Nobody wants the Canucks to rush Yolevi back for prospects camp. This isn't a blame thing. It's good that the Canucks are being cautious, but this has been going on for almost a year now. Even Benning has conceded that it's worrying to lose so much development time. 
And that's true too, you never want to lose a full year of NHL development with a prospect, but the fact of the matter is we already have, and all that's left to do is to look forward. So as for Jim Benning saying that the plan is in stone with the doctors, I trust that. So whether or not Ulevi starts the year in Vancouver because he outperforms a guy, or he starts the full year in the AHL, I still think by the time Ulevi is 23, 24, 25, he'll be a full-time NHLer and he'll be a pretty good one. Hope you enjoyed this video, and bye.